G'day all, I'm Graham Sanders and I live at Townsville, North Queensland. This is where Latitude 19 crosses the east coast of Australia. I'm trialling the honeypot hive system with the local species Tetragonula hocking's eye. This episode, let's wrap things up. Well, it's the 15th of August. It's a very cool morning because it's very overcast. Looks like rain. It's about 20 degrees. And as you can see, the buzzy bees are just starting to come out of the hive and begin morning activity. Showing you the hive now because there has been some changes. And we'll set this up now and we'll go through everything as we wrap up what we've done. So let's see if I position that correctly. That looks pretty good. You can see it on the side there. Yep, we're good. Get up there, Buzz. Oh, okay. What's happened? You can see there's changes in the hive. So let's discuss what's happened during the last month. Well, at the end of July, we got some very dewy weather in the morning. In fact, so much condensation that this hive was totally dripping with moisture. So I had to open up the hive and see what was going on. And the top honeypot tray was again filled with condensation. Unacceptable. And so I had to make some radical changes. And the changes I've made, and we'll see in a minute, is I've added a vent hole for ventilation, extra brood chamber, extra size. Totally changed it to the way it should work now. And this is why we're wrapping this up, because this, I believe, will work, and we'll find out when I open it up. Now, before we open it up, let's look at the changes that I've made that I believe anybody wanting to use this hive for Hocking's Eye needs to do. You saw in the video, I put a little landing platform there. Yes, they use that quite well. Entry tunnel. I actually made some foam and put an entry tunnel in here. You saw that there was a garden hose in there originally. Change that. And that's just a bit of foam like this, painted up. I would cut a tunnel at the end and it just slid in there. The great thing about the design is I can slide that out again at any time I need to. Speaking of which in the design feature, there's another one. I didn't do that just for the fun of it, just for you people. When I separate the induction, this is going in this side to blank off the entry on the other side. So it's a very simple method to blank it off, make it look neat and tidy, and it's all good. You'll notice I've added the extension. Had to put glad wrap in because the paint stuck. And until the paint really dries hard over a month, I've got to keep it there to stop the paint sticking. So there's a tip for you if you ever do this, is put some glad wrap there or thin wrap, cling wrap, whatever they call the stuff, in whatever country you're from. You put it there just to stop any sticking. Adding the br extra brood chamber made this hive now six litres in volume. Remembering, four litres, four litres. That's my brood chamber and pollen. That's eight litres down here, plus my surplus honey that I harvest. Because this design you can harvest far more regularly, let's just consider the four litres, four litres, eight litres. I've got six litres volume in here now. To me, that's about right. I think this is also very helpful. So in the design feature, you can see that I've added various things I think are needed for Hocking's Eye in the tropics. The last thing you noticed, well, if I've got to put a vent hole in the brood box, it's got to come out, hasn't it? Comes out, as I showed you in the opening, at the back. That was three weeks ago. Has not been plugged up. They put guard bees on that, and bees do go in and out of that entry hole through the wall. So they've considered the entry hole to be essential. 
What I'm more happy about is they've got guard bees guarding that tunnel. So they consider it essential and they must have occupied at least this to some degree because the guard bees indicate that they're guarding that entrance. So, all looking like good signs. Okay, there's no point banding around the bush. You've seen the externals. Let's get into the internals. We'll open that up. We'll open that up. Oh, I might just leave that there for the moment. So you can see there the extra brood chamber on top of the honeypot. Now, while we've got it there, we'll have a quick look and then we'll break it open further. So, for your convenience, up, over, in, I'll have a look in a minute. It's a bit high for me just to sit there. You can see it there. I can see there's a lot less condensation, hardly any bee activity. That tells me something. All right, we'll go back and we'll continue on. Let's put this back here. I better have a look and make sure it's pointing roughly where it should be, and it is. That's good enough. All right, then. Now I'll have a look. Oh, that's much better. Oh, there's no condensation in there at all. That's much better. So that bent hole desperately needed no bees. So that tells me all that bee activity at the top, all that bee activity we saw without the vent hole was bees constantly trying to get the moisture out of this hive. In other words, they're working, they want to occupy it, but with moisture coming there all the time, they're constantly trying to get the moisture down, probably just a little bit unsuitable. So that looks good. Let's look at what I recommend now, the hive structure before I have a poke in there because we're wrapping this up. Let's see if I can get this off. Or have I stuck that on? Oh, sheesh, I think I've stuck that in. Told you it was live. Ugh. Okay. I think there's a bit of paint in there. I'm going to have to work on that to get the paint, uh, to get that open. But if you remember from the last video, what I recommend is, yes, the entry tray there, I put two uh, honey pot trays face together there to increase the size. I've got to try to get that open to show everybody, save you trying to look up other videos. But I don't think, no, that's not wanting to come. I'm going to have to get a knife and do that later. All right, you can trust me on that. I believe there needed to be extra pollen stores. So we've got the pollen thing at the bottom there. That was good, the entry tray. I put extra pollen store at the bottom. There's two of these brood chambers. One, two. Third one up the top with the entry hole there that they're using. That's what I believe should be your starting point if you're trying to induce Hocking's eye in the tropics. That size is your minimum size. They do produce big nests and they like a big home to start with. Now, my last check is to check on... Where's my glasses? There they are. Better get that ready. I'm going to have a little look inside, see how this is going. One of the things I really like about this hive is you can actually take these layers off because they don't stick around the edges, only in that little circular bit. It's easy just to access and have a little poke around. So we'll just lift that which sure enough nicely stuck oh there she goes that tells you how well it's stuck down <clears throat> shows you everything's working well okay we'll just take that off beautifully done we'll just put that there let's see if i can have a look in here bear with me you'll have to trust me on this oh, it's like looking down into the well Oh, well, look at that. Oh, definitely look at that. I have activity. Oh, oh, hello, buddy bees. Oh, 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 that looks great. Oh, 
they have worked that. Oh, I better close that up. That's good. You, you can trust me on this. There is signs of brood in there. I think the hive has actually taken. So we'll just push that back down and we'll discuss. There is all sorts of activity down there. There's structure in the bottom uh, half of the last thing. Halfway up, I can all the infrastructure, there's that thin film right over the top, which I suspect could be brewed down the bottom. Lots of little activity going on. I think the buzzy bees have actually occupied that. So that's successful. All right, so let's close this up for the moment and then we'll go through it all. And then I'll worry about this bloody lid at the front here later. So we'll just close you up there. I'm going to go back into you again later. All right. So, let's go through this and the breakup. Externally, I've dis discussed that already. External tunnel, landing platform, nice plug, extra size vent hole. Internally, we need the space, get it up to six litres, extra pollen, three brew chambers, ventilation hole, that all seems to work. That to me is the recommendations. I don't think we need to go any further into the induction, so we're going to call this quits. I'm going to start a new series on management of this hive. How do we manage it? Because this looks like it is going away like a rocket now. I've got B activity in the tunnels. It's all good. That is my recommendation to anybody wanting to use this style of hive on Hocking's Eye in the tropics. Oh, no, no. What? Sorry. The application. Force close. Okay, we're right now.